Hey everybody, it's Paul here, and I was reading the thread at BlenderArtist.org, uh, how to make Ranjan scan effect in cycles, and basically that's what this person said is an x-ray effect. And I kind of figured out how to do it, but instead of doing a text or whatever this person wanted to do is, I am going to do a uh, effect on just a, or a generic subject, the Suzanne, the Blender Monkey. So let's get started here. We'll delete the cube. Let's create our friendly little monkey here. And we want to switch to cycles. And I shall turn on the screen cast keys. I don't even need to do that. So we just have our, uh, our monkey. And we need our screen for the x ray. This x-ray effect won't work without the screen here. And... Take that on x 90 degrees. That's just an initial setup. There's something I wanted to do with the Blunder Monkey, but I couldn't, because I tried an earlier attempt. And I was going to move the normals inwards, so when I do the x-ray, like, uh, the outer copy would be pushed inside, but... Apparently there's something that Wings 3D can do that Blender can't, and that's move all the faces on the normals at once. <laughs> so yeah, if you model and stuff a lot, Wings 3D still does a lot of things Blender doesn't. Even though it doesn't handle as many polygons, it still does some things. Which is why I use it, I guess. Now it's just used to using it for modeling anyways. Uh, so, what do I want to do? I want to lock my camera to view. And actually I'm going to scale this down a little bit so we can see how the overlap works with the x-ray effect. And I'm going to shift my view to center it. So anything that is behind the x-ray film will be x-rayed. Anything that isn't is just going to stay normal. Now I can unlock my camera from view so I can get it a little closer here. And the trick is to do it in the materials. And I'm going to do this a little different than the way I tried to do it. Because I couldn't, uh, <laughs> like I said, I couldn't push the stuff inside without it failing. So I'm not going to do it that way. I'm just going to add a wireframe modifier and keep it basic. I'm not going to replace the original though. And actually, you know what I am going to do is duplicate monkey. And in my case, it's right click, but with the normal key keys, I think it's a left click. But it just duplicates without moving. So if we look at the outliner here, yeah, we have two versions of it. In this version, I am just going to uh, wireframe and first version I am not, and that should be fine. And I'm just going to apply it so that way this one is the wireframe. You can rename that. X-ray. This one will be at least now we know what's going on here. And the trick is in the materials. And let's give the lighting a little bit of range better too. Nothing too fancy, it's just a setup thing. So we can see what's going on. Let's take a look at the render. So right now everything's opaque, basic, uh, nothing much, nothing too exciting, so let's change that. And first we will do is the material for this. So let's add a new material. An x-ray fill material should be a glass material. The reason it is glass is because this gives you transmission rays. And you need transmission rays to pull off this effect. 
And we set our index of refraction to plain old one. And let's give this a color like X-ray film, a, a dark purplish color. It's not dark, dark, but let's see. It should look something like a film, yeah. That's reasonable. So, we can go to our compositor. I'm just going to switch this room to 3D view as well. And this one I'll use as a rendered preview. So it's easier to select with solid than it is with rendered preview. I don't know why, but my computer it is. At least that way I can see what the materials are. So that is our x-ray film, and that's all we need for that. So, let's go here, and yeah, we should be able to pick Suzanne. Suzanne doesn't have any materials applied, so let's give her one. And we'll call this... Suzanne Railer material. And what we want to do is... Add a mix shader. And I'm going to replace this diffuse up here. Actually, no, this diffuse is fine. But the second, uh, I got to mix it with the. Uh, I'm going to pick a translucent shader. So when we look through X ray fill, it will be slightly see through. And I will pick a uh, color like so. And then what we'll do is input. And it needs to be a light path. And it is transmission ray. So let's hit that. And my cat is meowing at me, but he's going to have to wait. Hold on a sec. Let me pause this. Alright, I am false. Uh, my cat just had to get out, so. Took care of that back in here again, and where was I? Yes, I was mixing my uh, shaders. And. Translucent. That looks okay, I guess. Slightly more opaque ish. Or I could probably do a mixer. It with, I want to mix it with the fuse glass. Let's try to fuse first. But you notice everything behind x ray film is changing. That's the thing. Mostly translucent. Actually, we have to make this do less. I want to be able to see through it still. Takes a little while. Goes quick when I'm not explaining it. Okay, I think that's good enough. Uh, it'll probably work better when I do a second material on the wireframe part because that will give it light. Yes, I'm going to use an emission. So, that's that, but you can see the material changes when it's uh, in front of and behind the film. And if I zoom in here a little bit, I should be able to pick the wireframe. Oh, I need to add a material. That helps. 
And the same kind of thing is add shape remix. And add input, light path, transmission array. In this case, we don't want our wireframe to be visible outside of the X ray, so let's get rid of that. Add shader, transparent. Defaults to full of white, which means it's transparent. So if we zoom in here, you don't see it if it's in the first slot. But as you notice, you can sort of see the wireframe here. And then we'll just add input and input shader. <laughs> Chris are all types of inputs, but input is input controller. We want a shader. Emission shader. And we have our x ray effect, and the glass on the other thing is picking it up, so it does look kind of cool. And as you can see, we got our x ray effect already. It's that simple, so everything outside of the x-ray, uh, you don't see any of the wireframe. Get behind the x-ray, you do see the wireframe. I'll go to default again. I'm just going to pick the regular Suzanne, and I'm going to smooth it with a modifier. And let's give that a quick render. And that's how you get a wireframe x-ray effect. I should have used smooth shaded. Let's, let's do it all the way. So, smooth shaded. And let's get a little bit more uh, samples. Clean that up. That should be quick enough to watch. Uh, so, that clamp will help keep the fireflies down, which are uh, rendering artifacts. So let's click render again. Let's see what we got here. There it goes. It's rendering away. And that's how you get a really quick uh, x ray effect in Blender just by using a materials uh, transmission ray control. Uh, node input on uh, materials and it looks pretty cool in cycles and you can probably do that with like figures with skeletons inside them and other things similar technique and it should work and look cool so it's pretty simple once you figure it out but yeah there you go that's uh, x-ray effect